Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop and today doing something a little bit different. Uh, still gonna be doing some stuff with lasers and out here in the workshop, but I'm also mixing in my model aviation hobby. It's the end of the season, it actually just started snowing today. And so I'm going through some of my airplanes and gonna be doing some preventative maintenance or some, you know, things where I had some field repairs, I wanna patch them up and uh, make the fix right so that they're all ready to go next spring when I get out there and hit the skies again with my model airplanes. So uh, I'm going to show you what's wrong with this one and uh, what I need to do to repair it. So if that's something you're interested in, want to check it out, stay tuned. We're going to jump right into it. So I've been enjoying model aviation for many years and uh, way back to the days when you pretty much had to kit build out of balsa, light ply, Put on your own covering and everything and things have changed a lot over the years a lot of what they called arfs are almost ready to fly airplanes a lot of them that are being made out of a hybrid of foam as well as some wooden structure to them so tend to change our building techniques a bit um, but uh, these do offer kind of a quick fix enjoyment uh, get out there and have some fun uh, not everybody enjoys the whole building process like myself and others do so um, that is great however it, Occasionally you do break things on them yet and we have to take care of them. So um, we're gonna take a look at this one. Now this plane is in pretty good shape generally. And uh, really the what happened is I just got a little heavy handed with it. All right, so uh, as you can see on the inside of this airframe there, there is a wooden kind of frame structure here. And it kind of is the core of the airplane where everything kind of connects together. You got your carbon fiber wing spar in there. You've got your landing gear plate and it all comes up to the motor box here. All that part needs to be fairly structurally sound and uh, to help alleviate any of the stresses that come into play. And um, what is the issue with this one is there's a battery tray in here and I will get a close up of this that I slide the battery into and then it Velcros down with a strap. Well, I got just a little too heavy handed with it and uh, popped one of these wooden plates uh, so it made it a little bit flexible. Now I did field fix it and uh, put a little glue in there and it's been fine, but I just want to give it a little bit of extra strength. Now I could just slap down a piece of wood over the top of it and that would be okay, but I want to kind of just replicate the section here. I want to make it out of some plywood that's going to add basically a thin lamination layer there to give it some strength and uh, still be kind of level, but uh, not make it offset or unsightly. So. I'm going to show you how I'm gonna do that replication and uh, then we'll get it cut out and glued in. So let's get at it. All right, so here is a close up view of what we're dealing with. I have this plywood plate in here and uh, this battery strap does go through, there's a couple slots here and then it's fairly open. What this does is allow the airframe to still be lightweight but have the structural rigidity where it needs it. So my thought is I want to kind of just make a replication that's gonna start Kind of up here and work my way back to a little bit under here where you can't quite see uh, just to be able to have some glue here glue here we'll flatten this out the break is actually right here and it cracks into this slot for this velcro strap so i am going to show you how i'm going to replicate this part and, uh, and then we will get it into the software make sure it fits and then get it cut out so the first thing I'm gonna to have to do is, unfortunately, I'm going to need to remove this battery strap to get it out of the way. And uh, we'll then need to fish that back in when we are done. So we'll take that out. And then I wanna to try to clear everything out of the way as best I can. And then I'm going to, as square on as I can, take a picture with my cell phone to try to get a pretty good picture of all these shapes. Then I'm gonna take a couple of known measurements in here. We'll bring the photo of this part into the software. Then we'll scale it down with those known sh shapes and sizes, and then we'll just start drawing the pieces in. So let's get that photo going, and uh, then we'll be able to get it into the software. So really wanna just try to get in as close as we can to get it all and try to make sure it is as square parallel to that plate as possible. Grab a picture. Or two. And now let's go over to the computer. All right, so we're over here at the computer and I'm going to bring this photo into some software now. 
I could do this really quickly in CAD, but I know a lot of people don't have access to that and they'd rather learn in a software that's more relative to what uh, we're doing with lasers. So I'm gonna be working in Lightburn for this one and uh, hopefully that uh, is informative for most of you. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And uh, we are going to uh, start by bringing in our photo. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and import that. And uh, I picked this one, it looked the most top down and uh, it will go from there. So I'm actually gonna rotate this just for my own betterment, gonna work better in this orientation. Now, the other thing that you need to do with this is you need to know some dimensions of something on here. Now, I went ahead and measured this kind of rectangular shape and it is about 55 millimeters this way and 30 millimeters that way. We're gonna ignore the curves for now because we'll be able to put those in. More, most importantly is we wanna get this photo size down to where this is 30 and that is 55. So I am going to start by drawing a rectangle and we'll put this roughly on there. And that is coming out at 94 by 51. So I am gonna go ahead and size this down. Like I said, 55 wide and 30 tall. So now that is the size this image is supposed to be. So we can just grab our photo now and start sizing it down to where it is going to fit those same dimensions. Uh, in, in some CAD software, you can take a measurement tool of two points on a photo and easily resize objects that way. Uh, but uh, I'm unfamiliar with that in Lightburn. If you know a tip for doing that, go ahead and let me know and uh, we'll all learn that way. So kind of just gauging it off the top and the bottom initially. And it looks like we need to come in just a little bit and then I'm gonna slide it over. We'll kind of double check and get this dialed in best we can. And uh, knowing this isn't gonna be 100% perfect, but we will uh, get it as close as we can. Uh, and uh, sometimes what you do with this is you'll get uh, you'll get your item as close as you can, cut a copy, and then you'll compare it to the real world one and make your adjustments from there. Uh, whenever you have something like this that you can't necessarily do a flat scan of uh, or take just exact measurements because it's inside something like this, it gets a little tricky, but this looks pretty close maybe just a touch big. So let's bring it back in just a bit more and bump this down. This is where it gets a little hard because it wants to jump around some, but uh, just need to bring it over there. That's pretty close. We may be, I can tell that we're just a little shy on these sides, uh, but our top to bottom, eh, maybe we can bring it in just a touch more. And up. So I'm trying to go off this dark here and the edge there. Need to bring it over. There we go. That's about as close as we're going to get it. Uh, like I say, maybe slightly off there, but for this fix, this is going to work fine. So now that we have that in there, we can start working on the rest of our drawing. So one thing I want to point out here is to get our corners rounded, we can use this radius tool and. Uh, that will work on any 90 degree angles. You can click on your object, there we go. And we can set a radius of, uh, this is in millimeters, so it's gonna be kind of the radius of that. Uh, I'm gonna go with six, we'll give that a shot. Click on the corner and that may have been a little too much, so maybe it was fine at five, so we'll just unclick that, re-click that at five, and that's looking really good. So I figured it would have been six for a quarter inch, but not quite. So we'll bring all these in. And there you have kind of our first box. So now all I need to do is continue drawing our various lines and drawing in all these boxes in here. Uh, now that we have the photo sized right, and uh, then we can uh, get our object set up. So the other thing I am going to probably do is set a box boundary out here that is going to be our outside limits so i'm going to bring it uh 
I'm gonna bring it like this, but I think I may do something a little bit funny here. So I'm gonna just kind of time lapse this through you. I might voice over what I end up working with and we will go from there. Okay, so I'm starting with the battery slot and just like we made the other rectangular shape, I'm basically drawing a box, adding some round overs to it and then I can just duplicate that for the other side. And then I'm moving on to these other pieces. And now what I'm doing is I'm starting out with kind of blocks and I'm going to start piecing them together, but then I'm gonna start playing with the Boolean feature to combine them all into one. And that just kind of slowly builds pieces upon each other. And then about partway through this, I decide, hey, this is symmetrical. I'm gonna just draw half of this. So I continue drawing out all my shapes, getting them in as close as I can and uh, adding those round overs. And then eventually what I'm going to do is just duplicate the other half. Then I will mirror it top to bottom, as you see here, put it in the other side. And then uh, once again, I'm gonna use the Boolean command to combine those together. Then I'm gonna just kind of touch things up. I'm gonna open up the node editing tool and start just kind of squaring off some corners, extending things back where they need to be, adjusting some of those curves. Uh, at this point, this is kind of just getting it a little bit closer. I'm not so worried about this section. I just kind of want it to line up pretty closely with my image. And uh, so I just go through, touch all these up, take any of the weird notches out from combining and uh, solidify the shape. Okay, so I played around with it a bit and I know it's not gonna be perfect, uh, but uh, we're pretty close and so I think this will be good for a first run on this. So now all I need to do is get my material of choice. We'll get this set up for the laser and cut it out and uh, then we'll give it a test fit. What I have is this uh, about 1.5 millimeters, about a 16th inch. And this is kind of a, an aircraft plywood. It actually has three layers, even at this thin thickness. Uh, so it should be plenty of strength. And it is pretty much what that existing battery tray is made out of. So we're gonna go ahead and try to cut this out, see then how it looks like it might fit in there. And uh, if we need to make some tweaks, we'll do it uh, after we get that done, so. All right, so the part cut out um, actually only took about 45 seconds to do the actual cutting, even though it took probably 15, 20 minutes to actually uh, draw this up. So I guess now the only thing left to do is to see if it will fit in there and see if we got our measurements and our photo close enough. And uh, we'll see if it fits. If it does, we'll be able to glue it in and finish this repair up. All right, so here is the moment of truth. We're going to slide this down in here and it looks like the important parts we've got our tray our slot there and our battery battery strap slots line up everything looks pretty good from here so i'm very happy with how that came out i'm going to clean up the velcro out of here we'll uh, sand this down and get that glued in All right, well, there we have it. I was able to get the part epoxied in. The five minute epoxy worked really well. Uh, you mix it up, clamp it down, and it cures. Uh, within about five to seven minutes, it takes about a good 24 hours to get a full, full cure on there. But within uh, you know about seven minutes or so, you can start working with it on there. Just had to do some minor sanding to get the battery strap to fit, but did get that back in there. And uh, so now this is, uh, Definitely nice and secure, and hopefully my big uh, grill paws won't be 
uh, pulling too hard on this to get that battery out next year. So unfortunately, I'll have to wait till it's uh, nicer out uh, to uh, give this a test. Who knows? Maybe we'll have a nice Indian summer here and get some more nice days. Or I'll get brave and throw some skis on here. But uh, I've got another uh, bundle of planes that i got to run through and uh, do some just winter maintenance on as well as hopefully uh, maybe get around to some other projects that aren't quite finished yet. But so anyway, I just wanted to kind of show the process I use when you can't necessarily measure everything out or trace it out, taking a photo, grabbing a couple of key measurements and being able to replicate a part. So I hope that has uh, helped you out in maybe some of your future projects and uh, something that you can use in the future. So anyway, that's where I am going to wrap this one up. If you have any questions or comments about this process, the laser, or even my model airplane hobby, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I try to get back to those as quickly as I can. If you're interested in the X-Tool P2 laser, I will have more videos coming out on this in the future. So definitely consider subscribing. And uh, I will also leave links down below where you can find out more about them as well as affiliate links that if you're interested in purchasing one, you can use that. It'll save you some money and it will give a little bit of kickback to me. Uh, but as always, no pressure. Once again, thank you for watching this. Thank you for hanging out. Always appreciate the community in this space. And uh, I hope it inspired you. But most importantly, I hope you get out of your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.